It looked like a scene from a movie, but it was all too real. A meteor came crashing down to Earth today, triggered a fireball over Russia, and sent people running for cover. Parts of the meteor fell on the city of Chelyabinsk, population over a million, about a thousand miles due west of Moscow, on the edge of the Ural Mountains. The strike shocked and stunned the world. More than a thousand people were injured. Paul Davies of Independent Television News begins our coverage. Emerging from the Russian sky, a giant ball of flame. A meteorite providing a spectacular show until it suddenly explodes 30 miles above the Earth. The city of Chelyabinsk was unlucky to be beneath the meteorite's flight path and was showered with debris dropping from the sky. Thousands of windows were smashed. Shocked workers evacuated their offices. This school class is about to be interrupted by the shockwave. Here, the windows come crashing in and a national judo squad runs for cover. Canadian hockey star Michael Garnett plays for the Chelyabansk team and lives in the city. I was awakened by this loud bang and crash and um, shaking in my apartment that you know, literally shook me out of bed. And I kind of gathered myself and I went and looked out the window and I saw this giant streak across the sky that was the tail of the meteor. The last minutes of the meteorite's journey were captured by hundreds of cameras as it crossed central Russia at a speed of around 20 miles a second, briefly casting a shadow over communities below before passing on. CCTV in this office recorded the moment its journey ended. People on the ground have been injured, most cut by flying glass. The Russian authorities say there's no lasting danger, though. Radiation levels in the area are normal. But no one who witnessed this visitor from space in its final moments is ever likely to forget it. Scientists say the meteor weighed about 10 tons. And in what's being seen as a cosmic coincidence, it came on the same day as an asteroid that came exceedingly close to Earth, at least in space terms. As this NASA animation shows, the asteroid was just over 17,000 miles away from Earth, traveling at about 8 miles per second, actually inside a ring of television and weather satellites that surround the planet. It named DA-14, the asteroid, was half the size of a football field. It passed, we can happily report, without incident. And here to tell us about both events is astrophysicist and author Neil deGrasse Tyson, director of the Hayden Planetarium in New York City. Welcome to you. Let's start with what happened in Russia. How unusual was that in terms of size and impact? Well, we don't know precisely how common that would be. All we can do is sort of look back at other sort of reported such events. Uh, for example, there was an air blast that happened in the airspace over India and Pakistan back in the 1990s, which happened to be occur while they were in tense conversations about their nuclear buildup of armament. And so uh, such a blast mimics greatly what would happen with a nuclear blast. It's, a, it's an instant deposit of energy in the atmosphere. And so fortunately, we were able to tell them, we, I mean, people, my scientific <laughs> brethren who to study this, uh, we were able to tell them, no, that was not somebody's first strike. It was actually a cosmic event. Uh -huh. And so that was in the 1990s. And uh, if this had happened over the Pacific, uh, nobody would have noticed. Is it in so fact, is it in fact happening all the time, uh, this kind of yeah, thing? So, yeah, so something of this magnitude, uh, we might imagine, is... Uh, perhaps once a decade. I mean, if you, if it one happened in the 90s and one happened now, and you fill in for the areas of the Earth where it would not have been noticed if it did, uh -huh. for example, the North Pole or Antarctica or northern Canada, where hardly anybody lives, uh, you could easily sort of hide one of these from anybody's view simply because of the large swaths of area on Earth's surface where no one inhabits it. And so I could imagine yeah. it would be once every five to ten years. And what exactly is it? You know, what what is a meteor, and what and what is it? An asteroid for that matter yeah well okay we can go back yeah uh, asteroids 101 
um, in the solar system, actually I have the solar system on my tie, um, <laughs> this is not drawn to scale, but you have your sequence of planets going from Mercury all the way out to Neptune, <laughs> and uh, between, Mer between Mars and Jupiter, there's a swath of countless chunks of craggy rock, uh, which we call the asteroid belt. Now, a subset of these have wandered from their belt, we call that the main belt, and have orbits that bring them dangerously close to Earth. And we have collectively described them as near-Earth objects. You can call them near-Earth asteroids as well, but we want to include in there comets that might come near us that perhaps don't begin their journey from the belt. And so there's tens of thousands of objects that are dangerous, as dangerous as what we saw this morning in Russia, that whose orbit crosses the orbit of the Earth. Now, we cross the street all the time, the same street that trucks drive on, but we're not hit by trucks because we're not there at the same time and the same place. If you do the math, it turns out that eventually Earth and anything that crosses our orbit will collide with one another eventually. So these are the ones we want to keep track of. The problem is the little ones. The one in Russia was a little one by cosmic standards. They're so tiny you can't see them until it's too late. That brings us to that asteroid 17,000 miles away. That was, how unusual is something like that? How much in your scheme of uh, dangers, how dangerous is something like that? Well, in the past decades, we've gotten better and better at monitoring asteroids that kind of invade our space, if you will. And up until today, our, we were, uh, you know, the, the invaded space criterion was, does it come closer to us than the moon? Uh, the military now calls that cislunar space. It's, it was a new word to me even just a few years ago. Cislunar space is the is, is the region between us and the circle that is the orbit of the moon. And so we've been monitoring asteroids that have sort of been whizzing by in that zone for at least 10 or 15 years. This is the first one that has come so close that it is, in fact, 5,000 miles closer than our orbiting communication satellites, the geostationary uh, region around which perhaps even this television signal is being uh, sent around the world. So that was, that's caused to sit up straight and raise your eyebrow and say, now wait a minute, and now add that to the Russian uh, uh, air blast this morning, and you've got a situation where astronomers have been telling, the whole astrophysics community has been telling people about this for decades. And maybe it takes an actual event. Fortunately, from what we hear, uh, I don't know that anyone died in that event, just a lot of damage and cut faces and hands. Mm -hmm. But um, if it takes such an event to wake people up that Earth moves in what is uh, indistinguishable from a shooting gallery in the solar system. These are debris of rocks left over from the formation of the solar system. And, and, and there used to be sort of, yeah, yeah go on. Well, I was just going to ask you, as a, as a wake up, then what? I mean, what would be possible to do? Create a warning system? Yeah, yeah. I mean. <clears throat> exactly. So this was really a shot across our bow. Both of them were, all right? Well, one of them actually hit us. All right, at least burst in the atmosphere. The other one is like is a buzz cut to Earth. And you can say, well, what do you do about it? Well, if you live in a world without scientists and engineers, the first thing you do is you say, let's run or hide or buy water and dig holes and live in them. But we live in a technologically fluent culture, whether or not everyone shares in that fluency. And among those who know, we have ways on paper to deflect asteroids if we find them early enough before they come in. None of those plans are funded by any agency anywhere in the world. So that's a whole other cultural political challenge that would need to be overcome. For the moment, all we're doing with the meager funds that NASA has to do so, to do so and combined with some other funds around the world, is to just find the asteroids and track them. Now, this one that hit Russia, yeah, it tore up a town a bit, but it's not, it's not disrupting civilization. If you get asteroids about a kilometer in size, those are large enough and carry enough energy into our system to disrupt transportation, communication, uh, the food chains, and that can be a really bad day on Earth. And so uh, we set up a criterion to find all kilometer class asteroids whose orbit cross Earth. And we did a really good job at it. And we said, okay, let's go a little smaller. How about, how about um, 100 meter asteroids? Let's 
m map them. Now we know when they're coming, mm -hmm. but we still have no means to do anything about it. All right. Now the little ones, the <laughs> one that hit Russia, th those will show up the hours before they hit. And, and that one showed up just in the image. Maybe the military had a slightly earlier uh -huh. uh, beat on it, but nothing that, you're not gonna evacuate a town in the time available. And of course there were early and sort of obvious questions about whether there was a link between what happened in Russia and the asteroid that passed by, but it just looks like a strange coincidence? Yeah, just a cosmic coincidence, but sure, that's the, your first thought, until you notice that they had completely different trajectories through the solar system. And there's a chance they could have had the same trajectory, and if they did, then you'd worry whether there'd be other, other meteors in between that would come in line and hit us between those two events. No such thing happened, just a cosmic coincidence, and we should be glad for that. A big day in space and a lot to think about. Neil deGrasse Tyson, thanks so much. Thanks for having me.